Hello. We're at the point now in the course where we're moving from descriptive statistics into inferential statistics. And we're going to be studying how to take a sample and make statements about a population from values that we computed in the sample. And at the heart of inferences are probability statements that you make. If the sample has this value, what is the likelihood or what's the probability that the population will have a value, a similar value or a value within a subsequent range? And one of the aspects of making these probability statements and drawing these inferences is knowing how to use the normal curve table. And so we're going to be turning to that now. You have a copy of this um, that we've sent you on Canvas. And if you have that copy with you, that would be a good thing to go through as we um, go through this presentation. So we're going to turn now to the documents themselves, and I'll be showing you a number of things. In Chapter 7, you're learning about the normal probability distribution, which looks something like this. In Chapter 2, we talked about frequency distributions. And in Chapter 4, you learn that frequency distributions can have different shapes. You can have skewed distributions, distributions that are negatively skewed, where the skew goes off to the left. You can have positively skewed distributions, where the tail or the skew goes to the right. Or you can have symmetrical distributions, which is the distribution that you're looking at now where scores to one side are balanced off perfectly by scores to the other. The normal distribution, which is talked about in Chapter 7, is a distribution of continuous scores, scores that can take all values from zero out positively or down negatively. And it's perfectly symmetrical. And the normal distribution, the scores are reported in terms of z-scores. And z-scores, as you've learned in Chapter 4, have a mean of 0 and a standard deviation of 1. We, if you have a z-score of plus 1, you're 1 standard deviation above the mean. If you have z-scores of minus 1, you're 1 below. And these z-scores can take every value in between. We can have 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.7, plus 0.1, plus 1.5, and so on, and so on down in the minus range. And what these proportions here are telling you is that if you have a normal distribution of scores, then 68% of the scores will be between plus and minus one standard deviation. 95% of the scores will be between plus and minus two standard deviations. And if you go out three standard deviations on either side, you'll have just about all the scores in your data set. And the scores in a normal distribution can be scores of height, which you think is normally distributed. They can be a distribution of scores of weight, or sales prices of houses, or speed of cars, or miles per gallon of cars, or distributions of income. And we've taken these scores and changed them to z-scores. And we'll talk about why we do that. You learned, that, you learned about z-scores in Chapter 4, and that z-scores have a mean of 0 and a standard deviation of 1. So when you look at this distribution of scores here, you'll notice that as we move to the right, we have our positive z-scores. When we go to the left, we see our negative z-scores. And if you know a person's z-score, you know someone, or if you know a, or whatever set you're dealing with, if you know a person's z-score in height, or a z-score on a test, or a car's mileage, then you're able to tell what proportion of the test scores or what proportion of the cars your z-score exceeds. Once we know a z-score then, we can determine the precise proportion of scores below and above it. If you have a z-score or if you have a point of data that has a z-score of minus one, you're able to tell well, what proportions of all the other data in the set are below it, and what proportions of all the data in that set 
are above it. Now this chart that you're seeing here has only a very limited number of scores. We have plus one, plus two, and plus three. But as I said, the z-score is a continuous scale. We have 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0 0.75, 1, 1 1.25. And if we want to determine the proportions of scores below those types of numbers, then we have to use the normal curve table, which I'm about to show you in a minute. So essentially what we're doing then is we're going to be finding a z-score and asking what proportion of scores are below that and what proportion of scores are above that. If you have a z-score of plus 2, then approximately 98% of your scores in the distribution, whether they're test scores or incomes of a bunch of people, are below it, and 2% are above it. So let's look at the z-score tables. If you, and you should have a copy of that, so why don't you um, take that out and follow along with me. So let's look at the structure of this table. At the top of the table, you see a drawing of a normal curve. And it's divided into two sections, a smaller portion and a larger portion. I'm going to explain exactly what that means in a minute. We have five columns. The column over on the left are all the possible z-scores in this normal distribution. And as you can see, the z-scores, they start at 0, which is the mean, and they go out. A z-score of 0.26, a z-score of 0.7 on the next page we have z-scores of 1, we have z-scores of 1.29, and so on. So all the z-scores are on that far left-hand column. Now let's ignore this column y, the last column, and this column mean to z for now. And let's focus on these two columns that talk about larger portion and smaller portion. When you have a z-score and you want to know the proportion of scores that are below it or the proportion of scores that are above it, you have to know two things in order to use this table. Because inside this table are all these proportions. We have to talk about how you read them. You know, first, so first of all, when you have a z-score, how do you know which side the normal curve you're going to be on. Is your z-score to the right or is your z-score to the left of the mean or zero? If your z-score is positive, then you will be on the right. If your z-score is negative, you will be on the left. And then the second thing that you need to know is once you've located your z-score, it's even either on the right side or the left side, the second thing you want to know is am I concerned with the larger portion in order to figure out my probabilities or my concern with the smaller portion. So let's practice or let's give examples of exactly what I'm talking about. Let's say for example that using this diagram here you wanted to know what proportion you have a z-score of 2 or someone has a z-score of plus 0.2 and you want to know what proportions of scores are below that. A z-score of plus 2 locates you on this side. And if you're here, if your z-score is here, then the larger portion of the distribution is below to your left, and the smaller portion of the distribution is to your right. If your z-score was minus and you were over here, then the larger portion is to your right, and the smaller portion is to your left. So again, let's go back and say you have a z-score of plus 0.2, which locates you to the right, and the larger distribution is on the left, and the smaller is to the right. And you want to know what proportion of scores are below you, or what proportion of scores you are above. Looking at this table, find the z-score of plus 2. You'll find that on the third page. And you'll notice we have, down towards the lower right,
a z-score of plus 2. And now we're asking, well, what proportion of scores are below it, or the larger portion? Well, we just said we're concerned with the larger portion, with, with this column. And this tells you that almost 98% of the scores are below that z-score of 2. And about 2% of the scores are above it. That would be in the smaller portion. But our concern was the small, larger portion. We want to know what proportion of scores are below it. Let's say that you had a z-score of minus 2. A z-score of minus 2 puts you on this side of the distribution, on the left side. And if we want to know what proportion of scores are below a z-score of minus 2, you'd be concerned with the smaller portion because now the larger portion is above you. So let's go back to our table and we find a z-score of 2 again, which is here. Only now it's really a minus 2 because we're on the left side of the distribution. And we're concerned then with the smaller portion and it says below a z-score of minus 2 is about 2% of the scores. Above is almost 98%. It's just the opposite of what we, we talked about before. Let's say that we wanted to know what proportion of the normal curve is below a z-score of plus 1.5. This would be a z-score of plus 1.5. Here we have plus 1, plus 2, and 1.5 is between. What proportion are below? Well, you're on the right side of the normal curve. The, lower por the larger portion is to your left. The smaller portion is to your right. So we're concerned with the larger portion. So we go to our table. We find a z-score of plus 1.5, which is on the second page. And you can see a z-score of plus 1.5 right here. And we want to know what proportion of scores are below it. We're looking at the larger portion, and this tells us that approximately 93% of the scores are below it, and about 7% are above it. Let's say we wanted to know what proportion of the scores in a normal distribution are below a z-score of negative 1.25. This is negative 1. A z-score of negative 1.25 would be about here. We're concerned with what proportion of the scores are below. We're concerned with the smaller portion now. The larger portion is above us, so we want to know below it. So let's find a z-score of 1.25 which is right here. And it's a negative because we said we were given a negative z-score, negative 1.25. So we're looking for now the smaller portion. And what this tells us is that below a z-score of 1.25 is around 0.1056% of the distribution, or approximately 11%. If you wanted to know what proportion of the scores in a normal distribution are below a z-score of plus 0.4? Remember, z-scores can are continuous. We can have decimals. Plus 0.4 is about here. The larger proportion is to your left, or just over to the right. So we go to our table. And we find a z-score of 0.4, which is right here. We said it was going to be negative, and we were concerned with the smaller portion. So a z-score of negative 0.4 has about 34% of the scores in a distribution below it, and about 65% above it. Let's say that we wanted, we're concerned about 
what proportion of the scores in our normal curve, or in the, in the set of scores that we're looking at, are below a z-score of negative 0.6. Well, here we have a z-score of 0. Here we have 1. This is negative 0.5, so negative 0.6 is about here. We're concerned with the smaller portion, since we want to know what proportion of scores are below it. We go to our normal curve table. We look for a z-score of 0.6. That is right here. And we're looking for the smaller portion. So a z-score of negative 0.6 has approximately 27% of the scores below it. Now, let's go to that column where over here where it talks about mean to z. This is the mean of z-scores. It's always zero. And if we have a particular z-score that we're concerned about, let's say a z-score of plus one, and we want to know what proportion of the normal curve are between the mean and the z-score of plus one. What proportion of the normal curve are between the mean and a z-score of plus two? Or what proportion of the normal curve is between the mean and a z-score of minus two? Well, you can see from this table that is that the proportion of scores between a zero and a minus one is about 34 percent of the scores but we have many more z-scores than that when we look at this table let's say that you have a z-score of one and if you want to know what proportion are between that score and the mean you would look into this column and it's telling you that 34 percent of the scores are between the mean and a z-score of plus one. If you have a z-score of plus 1.5, about 43 percent of scores are between a z-score of plus 1.5 and the mean, whether it's positive or negative. If you have a z-score of two, then 47, almost 48 percent of the normal distribution are between the mean and your z-score of 2. And you'll find that will come in handy when you're trying to determine some of the proportions and probabilities that you'll get in some of your statistics problems. So, you know now how to use the normal curve table. And the normal curve table is telling you the proportions of scores that are below a particular point or above a particular point. Um, and the normal curve is also used for determining the probability of scores. As you'll learn in Chapter 8, in Chapter 9, if you have a z-score that's two standard deviations above the mean, then that's a rather improbable score. 98% of the scores are below it. A score that's more than two standard deviations of the mean has a rather low probability. Not many people get a score like that. And you'll be able to determine those probabilities from the table. Um, so read Chapter 7, study about the normal distribution, and um, I think that uh, you'll find that it'll be extremely valuable to you, particularly when you get into some more advanced um, formulas and demonstrations of statistics. Thank you.